Hey everybody, Butcher here, and today we're going to be taking a look at Beasts of Bermuda, and more importantly, how to survive in Beasts of Bermuda. Now, there's a lot of misconception uh, going around, because this game is actually a pretty difficult game. Uh, a lot of people think that you are unable to survive the either the elements or just mainly other people's big dinosaurs. Um, so, I, I really want to show you guys how I make it to adulthood in this game and show you that it's definitely possible. I can nearly make it to 1.2 every time if I really want to try. Uh, but, you know, d during that whole process, I may try to take some kills uh, where I see fit. And, you know, that only benefits you in the long run, but you don't have to make these plays early if you don't want to. You typically want to make these plays when you're adult. Uh, and some people... <clears throat> lead to believe that you know the infinite growth is a huge issue in this game and i just think that that's not the case at all i think you need to learn the game i think you need to learn the map how to play uh certain strengths and talent builds and all that it all plays a huge huge role in your success in this game not only in survival but getting kills on other players um, there's so much to learn, <laughs> and and unfortunately, uh, there's not a lot of information out there on Beasts of Bermuda or how to play it. Uh, but it's also what makes this game a gem, is that you actually have to figure out things for yourself. And you know, in a lot of games today, it show it just walks you through everything. Um, and so it's kind of cool when you have to figure this stuff out for yourself, and you can't exactly use the internet for advice or um you know just how to do it but uh i just kind of want to put this guide out there to alleviate some of the pressures and you know hopefully more people will feel less intimidated by entering the game or you know feel a little bit better even though there's massive dinosaurs on this map uh there's there's all kinds of different strategies you can employ to negate this to at least some extent i mean sometimes <laughs> there's not much you can do no matter what but uh, with all that being said, let's get into uh, what I think you should start with first. And if you're entering Beasts of Bermuda for the first time, you have no idea what the map is like. Or you just simply want to learn more about survival. I would definitely pick Pteranodon for your first dinosaur. Um, you could pick Trope as well, but I the only reason I'm not picking Trope is because... I'd rather focus on speed and learning things over um, the brute strength that a trope has. So, <clears throat> Pteranodon's not the strongest dinosaur right now. I mean, I hope a rework is in progress, but at this time, it's it's a little weak. Uh, although you can still have a lot of fun with it, you can get Baby Snatcher, you can fly around, pester people, uh, pick up little dinosaurs or their eggs. Um, it's, it's just a very, very good dinosaur to learn everything on. Uh, flight is a little bit difficult, although it is one of the better flight systems that I've ever experienced in a game. Um, but let's see, let's just put on a, uh, like a camo, camo skin. This, this kind of brings me to our first, uh, point, is that when you pick camo in this game, I mean, look how much you blend in with the grass. More than anything else and, you know and if that's your area that you're going to be at most of the time then that's the color that you want to have you want to blend in and now um if you're going to be in a rocky area or something i have a camo rock bird set up uh so it just depends on where you think you're going to be at the most so i'll show you how to make these skins um a lot of people seem to have trouble with this but it's really not that bad. Um, I can show you a few different methods. So we're gonna pick something that has some background texture. So like, hmm. you know what? Let's just go with default. Uh, we'll go with the default skin because it's a lot easier to do than any other. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our body, our three body pieces and it, uh, when you click on these, they default to white. <clears throat> but uh, what I'm going to do is go to the main body, turn alpha all the way up. I like to turn the alpha all the way up on nearly every skin that I make. And that's just because things don't get muddied when you are applying the colors. So basically to get the green, if you want to do like a green camo, you wanna, you're going to want to stick in this area right here. 
Uh, you don't want it to be so stark on the saturation. You want to back it off a little bit. Oftentimes I feel like 650. Uh, 0.650 is a good area and then you just want to you're going to want to bring your value down to eh, maybe around it's a little dark right now but let's go 125 okay so that already gives us a nice base line to go with um, and then we can even take our color hex and copy and let's see we want to make our details maybe yeah, we'll make our details the same. So I'm going to paste this in here. And then I'm also just going to paste this in here as well, but maybe darken it up or lighten it up. Uh, so let's just put this to like 200, point, point 200. And as you can see, that makes like a pretty good camo skin. You know, I am kind of ready to hide. If I got to dive down and escape something, it's going to be so much harder for them to actually find me than if I were to have, say, you know, this skin. Uh, it's got the blue, the really dark black. Um, somebody's going to see you if you land in the grass. But if you come up to your camo skin and you walk in the grass, you're so much harder to see. And this applies to all dinosaurs, not just birds. You can even use this on T-Rexes or size or even Appas. Uh, you're going to want these camo skins to get yourself started in this game. And I know there's a big, big thing about getting your colors and skins to be pretty, uh, <laughs> to be looking fly, looking cool, you know, but if your goal is survival, camo is always, always your best friend. So that's one of the biggest things right there alone that can change your outcome. I can't tell you how many times I've been a, cam a camo dinosaur and nobody could even see me. Uh, I would either be hiding in the grass and they'd walk right over top of me and they're like, oh my gosh, I didn't even see you, you know, and, and uh, they had no idea and that was able to make it so that I could get a couple kills or, you know, avoid danger at all costs and yeah, camo skins, good. But alright, um, one of the next things we want to go over is why I decided to pick Pteranodon. And one reason is because you can get really, really high up on the map. And it's a little foggy right now, so I can't really see too, too much in the map. So I'm just trying to gain some altitude here. And we're going up and going up. And this is such a nice advantage that you can look over the whole map and then you need to point out landmarks. So you see over here, off in the distance, we have the survival shrine and then even further, uh, Pteranodon Mountain. Uh, below me, here is Oasis. Um, up there is the desert portal. You can just kind of pick out your landmarks and really, really learn how the map is done and just give you that sense of direction on where you're going so we're gonna kind of explore the map a little bit here we can see right away just the one water source down there at oasis and then there's also a water source up here on top of desert mountain but you wouldn't be able to see that nearly as fast on any other dinosaur so pteranodon is definitely key in learning these things um, sometimes the server is populated by a lot of birds and it's hard for survival. Um, so, you know, if, if your objective is to learn the map, then just go at it with a mentality of, you know, I'm not going to grow this dinosaur. I'm just going to use it to learn the map and that way I'll be better prepared for the future. So you can find so many water sources on this map. Uh, I don't know. I think there's like 30 something or possibly even 40 on rival shores this is also my favorite map by the way i think it's just incredibly well integrated for aquatics uh as well as land creatures there's so many different opportunities to <clears throat> uh, interact with both species so i'm just gonna go out here to center island so you can see a few things um you know here's another water source so we found like three water sources so far pretty easily uh, and this just kind of maps into your memory of where things are in the game. But uh, I'd say the next biggest thing that you need to learn is, I guess, the escape routes on the map. There, there's a couple different escape routes you can go, and you never really want to be pushed into a corner. You never want to be in a one-way 
situation. Like, in certain caves, there's only one way in and one way out, and if somebody were to follow you in there, then they would be able to get you, uh, and completely ruin your day, at, at least if they're bigger than you. So, you want to avoid those one-way situations, and always, like, if you're going to be in a cave, you want to have at least one more way out, so that gives you some type of way to just escape you know you need to get out of there so uh other than that there's um there's these things like getting comfort bias and getting healing flowers and i can't tell you how much these help you like knowing the locations of just this may impact your survival especially with herbies now being able to eat on the run that's a massive massive advantage for you especially if you're like a speed dino and uh you're kiting somebody you're getting chased you can uh eat these flowers and move on and you know so you got your flower locations your healing flowers your comfort flowers and as well as your crystal locations so crystals heal massive amounts more than the flowers do um the flowers are still very very vital to know though but you can also come into a cave and get these crystals they heal for a lot more um so these are nice key locations especially if you're planning a hunt uh and even some dinosaurs you may be with uh you know have somebody like one of the smaller dinosaurs hold some crystals for you and put them in a location before you go into a hunt it's a uh, it's a pretty big deal to have a place that you may be able to retreat to to heal up and then get back into the fight and see we have oh hey there's a packy um see and that's another reason why uh pteranodon is so good is that you don't have as many predators as you would as if you were to start on land uh and you're quite fast too so you can get around the map and get to places uh, a lot quicker than anything else um, there's actually a pteranodon right here now too but hopefully he doesn't mess with me um, so, and again, you know, here's another water source, and there's another water source down here. There's a lot of water sources in forests, but forests is a potentially dangerous place, but most typically over the other locations on the map, you, um, can definitely get, I, I think you can almost get most of your trials done here in forest, but anyway, um, yeah, that should give us, like, a little basis of why Pteranodon is so important at first. Uh, and why don't we just kind of go over the talents here. So, I'm gonna go just hide right here because now I'm a plant. You know, they can't see me, I'm the camouflage. <laughs> so, let's go into our talent tree. Um, so, Pteranodon, uh, Pteranodon you can get away with almost doing any build. Uh, but other dinosaurs typically rely on a certain build set to either counter things or just be a competitive build for PvP. Uh, one of the biggest things is kind of knowing the meta of the map. So, like, you have to find out what's totally dominant on this server to really understand what kind of build you're gonna go and nearly any dinosaur can go nearly any build as long as you have the right talents that support it um that's that's another thing that i love about this game is that there's so many different options and counterable talents that you can pick so like as a new player i would suggest uh what well i'm getting ahead of myself here so there's three different talent trees there's speed combat and survival and a new person may think that well if i want to survive i definitely need some survival talents and while that may be true for some situations it couldn't be farther from the truth in total survival now it works this way in the wild too if there's a predator a prey is going to evolve to be faster um, than its predator so it can get away so essentially we want to have speed for our first build um there's a lot of really really good talents in this build that we can get a hold of and survive really really well with them 
So one important talent, one very massively important talent, not necessarily for bird, but other creatures, is aqua affinity. So we're going to be coming up through swiftness just to take aqua. So aqua allows you to escape um, nearly any situation. Now there are fish in the water that you have to be careful, but if you're going to die in the first place on land, you might as well go off into the water to try to increase your chances of survival. So I typically max aqua on nearly every creature and some of you may be wondering if it's good on bird and yes I think it actually is good on bird because you can pair aqua affinity with uh, strong lungs and you can actually log out underwater or you could just swim down underneath the water let's say you get injured you can go dive down to the ocean and sometimes you can get away. Uh, it's a very very useful infinitely useful talent. Um, and another underrated talent is definitely sneaky, 100%. You need to have sneaky if you want to survive in this game. If you make, if you're just making a Rex, for example, or a Psy or something, and you're walking through the forest and you have no sneaky, you're announcing to everybody, this is where I am, because your footsteps are very, very loud, okay? You, you need to quiet your footsteps down and you know, use this sneaky talent to survive. Uh, and, and if you put three points into sneaky, if you go into rest, your scent cannot be displayed. And, and let's say you reincarnate this dinosaur and you have three points into sneaky, uh, you have a chance at getting five sneaky later, which in turn leaves no scent as you're going around uh, the map, walking around, running around, doing whatever, you leave zero scent. And this is a massive, massive advantage in trying to sneak around the map, um, gain vantage points, um, try to make a kill on something. If they can't smell you and they can't hear you, the only thing that they have to rely on now is visual acuity. And <laughs> if you take the camo skins, then you're even further prepared because now it's very, very hard for them to see you as well. So we'll definitely be taking sneaky talents. Um, endurance is a very underestimated talent. Uh, this comes in handy in all sorts of situations. There's things like um, just a situation when you can outrun somebody. They may be faster than you, but you may be able to outrun them. Some abilities are uh, some abilities utilize endurance. Uh, and can help you get away or get that final um, uh, charge or stomp or you know whatever you're doing um, it allows you to do that so very very good talent and endurance um, nimble footed depending on like what dinosaur you are it can help vastly or it can help very very little it just depends on the species um well I think that probably covers most of the talents uh, that I kind of wanted to talk about for survival. I mean, I guess you could go into like resilience, stress, and healing. Those are also very good talents to rely on, and mm, I think every dinosaur has them. Uh, we're obviously in the bird tree, so I can only pick apart a few things. But combat is not really a big, big deal. Um, it does when you become... When you, when you start getting to the point that you can hunt and efficiently hunt things better. But basically, if it's your first time through, you really, really want to rely on the speed tree and survival tree. Uh, speed being priority. Um, let, let, me, let me just talk about weather resistance here for a second. Um, typically, I see a lot of new players collecting weather resistance. And... I'm probably going to get flamed for this sometime in the future, but <laughs> don't take weather resist. It's just such a useless talent to me. Um, you may be able to hunt out in the rain and stuff and paired with out of element. It can kind of be decent sometimes, but for the majority of situations, I just typically take shelter in storms. Um, I'm not really afraid of getting hit by lightning. I think in my 5,000 hours playing, 5,000 plus, hours of playing i may have only been hit by lightning twice two or three times uh so with the reincarnation system 
I'll just let lightning hit me. I don't really care if I die. <laughs> Most of my uh, attacks and hunts are focused around the 1.2 build anyway. I don't typically have the time to get a massive dinosaur. And I can tell you that 1.2 dinosaur can nearly always kill anything bigger than it. As long as you have certain advantages or certain plays that you can make. So using the aqua affinity sneaky and camo skins you gain a massive advantage in the game to set yourself up for these hunts so okay we're gonna stop talking about the talents a little bit and then possibly talking about what dinosaur you might graduate to after the pteranodon now i'm just going to creature select And go down here and delete this and create a new one. All right, uh, the next thing that I would suggest that you play after learning the map and all the flower locations and water locations, um, lear learning all those things, I would suggest you either play a para, a packy, or in the carnivores, I would recommend playing um, probably Mega, the Megalo, or Mega Raptor. I would definitely say the Mega Raptor has a higher skill cap, so I would stick with the Megalo for now. Um, the reason I picked these creatures is because I wanted, I want you to pick something fast, something that can get around on the map alright, and once again we're going to be going with a camo skin no matter how big we are, because that helps us so much. And let me just show you here, laying in the grass. I mean, there's times where you can almost disappear in the grass, even as a para. I know I'm not full grown, but even if you're full grown, you can lay down uh, and still hide from a lot of enemies. But basically, <clears throat> we're going to go into the talent point tree here. And uh, we're going to be taking either sure-footed up to swiftness or aqua up to swiftness. Now... I've kind of had my roundabout way with Surefoot. I I really think Aqua Affinity, oops, sorry, Aqua Affinity is infinitely more important than Surefooted. Uh, it seems to be that most dinosaurs can run downhill pretty pretty quickly without having much issue. Um, the the only exceptions would be Koa and Paki, as they gain a good knockback benefit or just. Uh, you know speed going down the hill to get their to get to their targets so i actually typically go through aqua affinity and i'll put three points into this and then i'll also put three points into sneaky and i'll take endurance of course and now here's where we get to a terrain talent that we definitely want and that's strong legs and this lets you get get up the hills faster rather than down the hills down the hills everybody goes fast enough in my opinion i don't see the point in necessarily needing to go faster strong legs though you significantly slow down on the slopes so you want to take strong legs to get up those hills to get out of the way faster or run away from something if it's chasing you or to even catch something a lot of people don't take strong legs and you can catch them and kill them that way um the next point we'd like to get to is either powerful legs or nimble foot and this kind of depends on the character that you pick right now we're taking para so i actually like both i like powerful legs because i can jump turn and nimble foot because in that jump turn you spin around so much faster and you can actually gain a big advantage on let's say a meg that's trying to kill you or something and you can get on his butt and stomp him put him in the dirt and you're golden and then uh the next talent that i would definitely get is swiftness this is actually not the most important talent though out of this tree which is why i kind of think it's funny that it's here um it's kind of like a top tier deal though like increasing overall speed although it doesn't really increase that much if you have five swiftness it does it does make a pretty big deal um so we'll definitely take three though because it still is important to get away um so basically uh well at least for para you know turn while stomping is definitely a good option to have it just lets you become a lot more fluid with your movement because when you stomp you actually stop and we don't want to do that we want to be moving at all times so turn while stomping is definitely a good thing to have so 
by the time you're 1.2, you're going to be able to invest 31 talents. So if we went through this just to get our speed build, we'd go 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24. And then that gives us the leftover options to either go into survival or combat. Now, in Para's case, I think that having the extra combat is a good thing. Um, survival is not all that important to me. Uh, typically, if you're going to be hunting with Para, you're going to be going all out or defending yourself. It's like all out. And the only other time I think it's nice and defending is when you have the constitution. So and that's like a 10, 20, and 30% health increase, which is very good. Um, although, if you're building speed para, it, it takes a little bit higher of a skill cap to kind of get on things tails, um, tail ride them, and just engage that way, instead of going into like a combat survival all-in scenario where you're both stomping and just trying to outstat each other. Um, I think the speed gives you so much more option for the skill cap. So now you can finesse people in all different ways and the damage doesn't matter near as much as the speed because if you can outplay them, you're going to eventually just keep damaging them and them not damaging you. So, uh, but I think the damage outweighs the survival aspect. There's not a lot of things that's actually going to help you. I mean, if you do have a long fight, the resilience to healing is going to help. But uh, if you're able to able to dispatch with your prey quickly, then I think it's typically nice to go Adrenaline Stoic Persistence Brawler. Um, you don't really need Unbreakable on Para because you have the four leg walk where you can do this and you don't have near as much injury. Uh, or I guess the effect of injury on your creature. So we're going to go back into our talent tree here. And what I say? 24. So it would be 27, 30. So you could go 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. So you could have two points into Adrenaline, Stoic, Persistence, and Brawler. Persistence is very, very important on Para because it lets you get like another stomp or two in. Uh, especially when you get inherits into this talent. Very, very massively important. The brawler uh, is just there for a little bit of extra damage, which is nice. Um, ultimately, you do want to eventually get bruiser, but this is just our 1.2 build. <clears throat> bruiser lets you get those extra damage on tail hits and then also apply injury on tail hits. So that's a very, very good thing to have. Um, so you may kind of adjust your build here depending on how you want to play. But uh overall like i said i think the speed is going to help you more at least survive and then once you start getting better at surviving you can really start playing with stuff like bruiser uh or intimidation um you can make a massively good bait para off of this build taking intim and possibly bruiser uh as bait you don't really need it so the intim actually helps quite a bit by lowering the enemy's comfort and giving it the option to where they don't heal as much so and that's kind of some more advanced stuff but uh yeah speed definitely go speed um and uh you know learn learn your map i guess there's a fat plane over here so that's a very very good thing for herbies to gather fat plants it feeds you a lot and it gives you some satiate now satiate essentially just keeps you more full longer so you don't have to eat like let's say there's opportunities where you can't eat um, then you definitely want to have satiate so it keeps you fuller longer so you can get better growth ticks um, but okay enough about para we'll get a creature select again and we're gonna delete and i'm gonna go into a creature that has a lot of misconception and a lot of uh misunderstanding i guess yeah there's uh the sigh um there's so many people that want to make sigh the biggest baddest thing on the planet and want to go full survival and combat and you know i just think that sigh is super 
underestimated when it has speed. I can't tell you how many times I've actually ended up killing somebody because I had a little bit of speed. And also sneaky, it's massively huge, you want sneaky, even on Psy. Uh, a lot of people think that's ridiculous to do, but it's in fact amazing to do because Psy is one of the loudest creatures in the game. And if you actually want to be offensive in any way with Psy, you definitely want the sneaky so you can bring the fight to them. Everybody else has the fight brought brought to them, but you want to attack people. Uh, I mean, it, it, it all depends. But having this option definitely makes you more survivable, and it gets you um, to the point to where you may be able to avoid situations if you don't want them. There is There are a lot of situations where a side doesn't want. Uh, let's say you run into a bunch of appas or you run into a bunch of acros having the sneaky will get you out of it um, they won't be able to hear you and then like i said if you get the five point inherit then they won't even be able to smell you so then the acros can hardly even hunt you and with being a sigh you're so low to the ground that you blend in with the grass and hide with the grass like so so very well I actually had maybe a 1.6 Psy uh, at one point or something like that, something around that area, and I could still sit within the grass and nobody could see me and it was pretty hilarious. Uh, people would walk right over me and I'd instantly cripple them. Um, Psy has a very good base injury rate and uh, <laughs> they, they get pretty much uh, screwed if you have that tactical advantage. Um, yeah, so many people, way too many people build combat in survival. I don't know why. Um, I mean, it, at first glance, it, it makes sense to do that, but I just uh, encourage people to take a second look at speed. Um, Surefoot is pretty massive on Psy, though. I, I, this is the one case where I don't think I would take Aqua Affinity, because Surefoot, you just want as much land speed as you possibly can get. So you're going to be going like Surefoot, Strong Legs, Endurance, definitely the Sneaky, um, swiftness definitely, and the... Uh, I never take nimble footed. I don't really think it's that necessary. Um, heavy is a potential option. Uh, kind of increases the acceleration as you go downhill. I've tested that. Um, but as a core, you definitely would just want these. Um, exhausting bite, eh, not really that great, especially when you can go down here to adrenaline and bruiser and persistence steadfast and sharp spikes this is definitely a build that i would feel comfortable with on sneaky speed side uh, gets you a lot of surprise attacks gets you a lot of fights that you want rather than don't want and uh very very fun thing to do i i don't really recommend playing Psy though or this version of Psy until you have a little bit more experience with the game but it'll be one of those uh graduation things after para after you've like learned para or megalosaurus uh, things like that because it's uh, just a little bit advanced on some things you have to do. Um, size is a fairly easy creature to play though, it's just this sort of play style requires a little bit more skill. Um, but okay, let's go to creature select. Um, and delete this. Okay, now we're going to be going to Rex, one of the most terrifying creatures and most undesirable creatures it seems to be like rex has a lot of weaknesses that uh a lot of people really don't like they think they can't survive on rex well i'm here today to tell you you definitely can survive on rex and uh we're gonna be taking that camo skin right away for sure and um one one important note on the camo skins is that you notice that i have a darker and a lighter shade uh, typically, if you go all one color, it doesn't break the silhouette up that much, so if you do that, you can blend in so much better with the grass or the ground, the terrain that you're on. And um, let's just take a look at the talent tree. The main thing we want on Rex, believe it or not, is Aqua, and I think a lot of people actually know that. Um, at least uh, there, there was a Jag Rex thing going on, a lot of people built that way. and. Uh, then it got nerfed and people stopped building aqua but i'm here to tell you do not stop building aqua this is like your only escape as speed rex um and a lot of people may say well why even go speed rex when you could be the biggest baddest creature out there and the reason is because if you're new typically 
there are going to be other bigger Rexes than you starting out. So you may want to go uh, speed, you know, and that and that just goes to show you how important the meta of the map is. If you have people on the map that are full combat Rexes with full survival, good luck. <laughs> I mean, it's definitely possible to kill them, but I would rather counter those dinosaurs than to meet them head on. Um, there's other options like Velo uh, or Mega Raptor that you can smoke a Rex with uh, instead of just going another Rex. So if there's these massive Rex on Rexes on the map, you definitely don't want to go uh, survival combat because they're just going to catch you and you'll they'll outstat you. Stat Rex, the bigger Stat Rex beats the bigger Stat Rex unless you have just massive inherits in one category or the other. So basically we're gonna be going through uh, Aqua, Sneaky, Endurance, Strong Legs. Um, powerful Legs is very underestimated too. Um, there's been plenty of times where I was able to jump on my Rex and jump up and kill Megs or something that thought they could get away from me. Um, although I don't think it's the most important talent on here, you do have to definitely be careful going over edges and cliffs. Uh, but if you want to chase people over edges and cliffs, take powerful legs. It lets you do that with like no injury. Uh, and it is a very powerful tool. So after endurance, we're going to be taking nimble foot. And I also take heavy and I take swiftness when I do a speed rex. I think it's a very solid build. The heavy gives you acceleration on the downhill slope. Uh, lets you get away from things faster. It's where you might be able to retreat to the water with your aqua affinity. And then you can... Uh, if you do get an engagement with somebody, you can use your nimble footed to tail ride them and get on their butt and start chewing. And, you know, endurance is massively important too. Just being able to run a little bit longer because Rex has a very low stamina pool. Uh, exhausting bite is actually really, really important too on Rex. Um, sharp teeth, eh, not so much. I just don't think that sharp teeth really matters all that much. Um,. Most things that you're going to be fighting are like as this build are going to be smaller than you or same size but like a mid-tier dino rather than an apex predator. So sharp teeth doesn't really come into play and I'd much rather have brawler. So essentially you want to be going this build and then once you're done with that maxing those stats uh, you want to be going down through adrenaline, stoic, persistence and then take brawler i don't have enough talent points right now to actually put it into this but later you know max your speed then come into combat extra damage doesn't hurt um there's also another school of so a thought though too that resilience down to healing can kind of lead you away uh and help you heal up but through combat i really really like the stoic because that protects you from packies and koas and getting launched uh to your death so persistence really doesn't matter much because rex does enough damage without having to expend much ability power and then you get the brawler just for just for raw damage and then way way later you can take the bruiser to get the tail hits like the injury on the tail hits or more damage on tail hits uh so it's infinitely uh valuable and um but yeah that's kind of uh the breakdown of rex you, you know you you always want to be stalking on Rex. You want to be slinking around like a fox. Uh, you don't want to go in there just thinking you're a big badass because Rex has a lot of weaknesses and injury is one of the biggest weaknesses to speed Rex. And I mean I'll, I'll run around and get my trials and everything, get my trial points up and then reincarnate to try to get a faster Rex. But for the majority of the time when you're hunting, you, you want to be doing this. You want to be sneaking around looking for prey, not giving off your scent, and be patient. Uh, that That's like probably one of the biggest things that people are not in this game. They're not nearly patient enough when they're hunting. Uh, typically people want to go in uh, to unfavorable conditions and just completely ruin your advantage of everything you've worked for. The camo skin, the speed, the sneaky. You want all that to come in play and actually be a real predator just like in real life. You want to be sneaking around, find somebody, and then ambush them. 
you know, as hard as you possibly can and gain that advantage. I've actually come in contact with a lot of speed, or er, sorry, uh, combat rexes and survival rexes, and I would either catch them laying down or just catch them in an unfavorable position. I get the tail ride and I get the win, and I didn't have to invest anything in combat or survival. Um, and you get a win, you get a nice meal, and uh, feel accomplished. So that's uh, another big area of survival. Uh, we're going to be going back here, and typically, uh, let's see. Uh, let's talk about some survival in the water. And kind of one of the hardest ones to survive on right now in the water is Moza. Uh, it kind of seems to be in a weird spot since they buffed Chrono, and let's see, we'll get the skin. Uh, since they buffed Chrono and Elasmo can just run, um, Moza has, they're kind of like in between the two fish. So, you know, do you go camo on Moza or not? I typically don't. Uh, the reason being is that if you're looking off in the distance over like let's say that rock straight ahead of me The creature is actually going to appear to be gray rather than their actual skin So I just typically play a skin that I want to play um, I used to build camo, but I just don't really feel like it's that necessary and, and when I'm a fish I'm almost always chasing people in the water um, You may ask what's the best path of action in your talent tree for fish uh, I think there's two builds that you can actually go, and that I actually enjoy. Um, one is through Asphyxiation, down to Thick Hide, so we'd go here, 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 here. And then, so you get the Asphyxiation, not really because it's that great of a talent. Uh, it's not bad, but I don't typically rely on trying to drown my prey, I just typically try to out damage them. Um, and then powerful neck, same thing. I don't really thrash that often, it's just as a uh, thing to get through to get to this part of the build. So, and you know, you may even want to take adrenaline just in case because you do have the thick hide. So, the more uh, the lower you are, the more damage you're going to deal rather than asphyxiation, powerful neck. But sometimes it's worth it to pick things up. Uh, so, I, I essentially went this build so I could actually fight Chronos, pick the Chronos up, and just thrash them, but everything else I would try to out damage. Um, so basically you're going to want to go from the Asphyxiation, Powerful Neck, Intim, Thick Hide, Persistence, Unbreakable, Sharp Teeth, and that will give you a very nice stat Moza. And then beyond that you can even go like Brawler, Healing, and Powerful Jaw. These all pair very very well with each other. You won't be that fast, but you will definitely have some good stats uh, and be able to stay in the fight and hold on to people if you decide to pick them up. So uh, the other school of thought, and I'll just force respawn here. Okay, the other school of thought here is, sorry, I just had to recreate a Moza uh, to get the other talent builds, is to go speed. And this build is certainly viable in all ways. Uh, you definitely want to take like rich blood, endurance, improved dart, um, beachgoer, uh, swiftness, and then aqua. I don't typically take Sneaky on Moza anymore, although it's still a useful tool to use. Um, if you take Speed on Moza, it's just a very nice thing to have, and you can actually do Sneaky, Exhausting Bite, and Sharp Teeth, so you can kind of run your talent build down that way into the combat tree. Um, I really like this build. This is a very fun uh, chase people on land, grab them, and then kill them, or you know, pull them back into the water. Uh, that's just a very good survival tactic to be fast, um, grab your prey and go. If you get chased by lurds, you can dive deep because you have the speed, um, and then they they have a really hard time surviving down low. Uh, obviously this isn't the, a very good place, but uh, when you get deeper out into the ocean, they struggle, and using the speed to get down there really, really helps. 
So, um, and then I just want to show you, I'm just going to force respawn that. I just want to show you my list of dinosaurs. I actually went through a period of the game where, uh, I got rid of all my dinosaurs and kind of quit for a while. And it was kind of, a, an opportunity for some self growth. Uh, I needed a break from the game. So I kind of deleted all my dinosaurs to not come back, but in my return to Bob, I've made a couple creatures and I'm not afraid to share this with anybody because I know that any new dinosaur can be made and any counter combo can be made. Uh, you know, my Rex is not big at all. My Mega Raptor is starting to get a little bigger, but it's still within the 1.2 range. And in all my videos, I'm showing how to kill things and you don't really need, need to be that big. Like I'm adult size. I'm not like super ad adult. You know, I do have good inherits um, on my Mega Raptor, but that, that I did with Reincarnation. I didn't get nested, I did it all myself, um, and it, it definitely helps having the right inherits and in, in getting those in the correct places. Um, so I just want to show you though, I you know, I don't have anything extraordinary, and I'm still able to get really, really good kills, and if I die, you know, I just don't think it's all that big of a deal. If you die, you can either reincarnate to come back or just grow another dinosaur. You know, if you have one with really good inherits, then obviously you're going to reincarnate. Typically, I wouldn't even sacrifice anything, although I may hold something to just sacrifice in the, in the event that I die. Um, but, and, and that's, that's like kind of what you could use your first bird for. Like if one of your good dinosaurs decides to die, then you can use this to sacrifice. You know, a, a full grown bird can have a good amount of points to sacrifice. Um, so then you can play your dinosaur again. And that's another just survival tip. So like if you die, you have a backup plan to fall back on. And uh, I just also really, really want to encourage combat. If you feel like you're able to snake a kill on somebody, go try. You know, you're, you're only going to get better at the game if you try these engagements. Like, there's, there's so many people who are... Um, trying to get better at the game but are so obsessed with growth that they never actually develop the combat skills that they need to survive you need to learn how to fight so get out there you know like at uh typically at point eight you should be uh going out looking for things to hunt obviously there's going to be places or areas you should avoid or dinosaurs you should avoid but you can look around with the talents that i've suggested for you to find these favorable fights that's the that's the thing that makes the camo sneaky speed so attractive is that you get to pick your fights rather than the fights get to pick you so get out there fight learn more about the combat uh, as that definitely increases your likelihood to survive as well so i hope that this kind of got you guys a little bit of a start uh, I know this is a, a very pre or well very voice heavy presentation and not a lot of action going on in the video but it does contain a lot of valuable information especially for the newcomers um, and, I, and I hope it does help some people that have played a long time as well uh, just those certain strategies that help you survive and help you get the kills that you need uh, for your trials or for food or whatever um, do these things and I guarantee your survival rate will go way through the roof uh, and if you guys have any survival tips that you'd like to leave in the comments below please do that because it gives new players so much information to come in and you know let's say they find this video they really want to study how to survive it gives them the edge to stay in the game and get more people on the official servers because that's what i really really want right now uh, some of the official servers are uh, a bit struggling at the moment. I really want more people to play this game. It's such a good game. I love it. I think it actually blows the other dinosaur games away just on features alone. Um, so that's just my take on it. And uh, I hope you guys learned something and got something out of the video. Uh, I'll be doing some more of these instructional tutorial videos just to try to help the newcomer players or anybody really. So. But yeah, guys, that's it. Uh, hope you enjoyed. We'll talk to you later. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching, buddy.